say we'll be at the opening ceremony of the Games tomorrow. But next tonight, we're joined by a Bristol balloonist who took part in one of the sport's toughest challenges. Yes, Clive Bailey and his teammate Paul Spellwood took off in the Gordon Bennett Challenge, but they had to land after flying into turbulence. Clive, as you've seen, is here in the studio. From the very beginning, this was a real tough one, wasn't it, Clive? I, I wouldn't have liked to be in the organisers calling the race on. I mean, at five o'clock in the afternoon, we had torrential thunderstorms and rain. They delayed, delayed the start from, uh, from six o'clock that night and then to 10 o'clock, and we finally got airborne at six o'clock the next morning. And, and we took off thinking, why have we just taken off? <laughs> but I heard you saying you were literally dropping and, you know, going... Yes, yeah, it was... serious drops. Yeah, I mean, we were, we were using ballast. It's hydrogen balloons, so to go up, you have to throw ballast out. But if you get caught in turbulence, you come down, so you've got to throw ballast out to get back up there. And each time you throw ballast out, when you get out of the turbulence, you get that much higher. So it's this sort of yo-yo effect. And yeah. So where did you take off from? From Nancy in France. OK, and how far did you get? I don't, you know, I haven't looked to see how far. Not very far. I think we were 13th, <laughs> which is a bit of a you shame for GB. <laughs> yes, it, it could have been, actually. <laughs> but uh, our problem was that we got up to the north of Paris and that evening we would have descended low level as the hydrogen cools down and turned left and been over Paris at midnight in some turbulence and we just couldn't obviously couldn't take that risk if mm. Paris would have let, let us through even. Yeah so too low for their air traffic control possibly. Yes yeah so we just took so the safety So where did the others options. go because yeah. I suppose you think once everybody's gone up you'll all go in the same direction but it depends what thermals uh, you, there, meet, there you catch doesn't it? Two at brief there were, and, and our weather guys um, Paul and I had a long chat with them there were two distinct ways you could go. If you stayed low level and went to the east, you were going to catch up all the thunderstorms that went through. And some of the guys and girls went that way and they got caught in some terrible weather and, mm -hmm. and landed and they were chucked about all over the place. We were opted to go straight high, um, up to eight and a half thousand feet, and then climbed up to 12,000 feet and went out almost up to the north and up towards Paris and kept out of the worst of it. But we were above it with these huge, great towering queues and going into them and out of them and some ice storms and that. And Paul and I were sat there looking at each other, somewhat concerned on occasions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the race is still going on. Uh, Willie Imers has just landed. It's his thousandth gas balloon flight. He's my instructor last year and, and Paul's Germany? instructor. Germany. And we really wanted them to win. He's landed so, in Portugal. So who else is up there? Who's left At the up moment, there? the French, and I'm not sure about the Swiss, but the French have got a super lightweight balloon and we think they've got enough ballast to go through the night. So I think they're going to sneak up and just pit the Germans. OK, thanks well, we're much, glad Steve. that you're safely back. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, thanks very much, Clive. Thank you. Richard, is it true that you're the only person in the world to survive being hit by a plane while standing on the ground? Carly, as far as we know, yes. We did once approach the Guinness Book of Records, but they said, we're not going to stick you in the book because who is going to try and beat you at doing that? <laughs> we better have a look at it, hadn't we? Can you okay. talk, talk us through what's going on here? Yes, yeah, certainly. 1976, summer of, it was the year of the great drought, which is why the ground is so parched. And here comes the Starfighter. I was oh. meant to be, I was meant to be uh, a target for flower bombs, but it was the flower that was meant to hit me and not the wing of the plane. But the poor pilot was so intent on trying to drop the flower bomb on my head, oh. uh, he didn't notice the wing had dipped. And that was Mike Hasty, who thankfully kept the camera rolling I and know. came out Very... to see if I was alive or dead. Very good cameraman who kept, kept it running. We hurt. Uh, my pride was. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was a bit bruised. My mother, who is in her mid-80s, will still not watch that film. Oh. She doesn't like the bang noise. No, I was kept in overnight. Great response from the public, which was really, really lovely, but I was allowed home the next day. So that wasn't the first time it went over you. Should we have a look at the first time? You should have learnt your lesson, really, shouldn't you? Yeah, Let's have a well, look at this. The, the idea was I was holding a brolly, and I was saying, what am I doing holding a brolly <laughs> during a drought? Well, it's not rain I'm expecting, it's flower bombs. Oh. And the first time in, they miss me. And I can remember putting down the umbrella, leaning on it and saying, I don't need this. And then after that, I came came to in the back of an ambulance. Gosh. And you, I mean, you were actually knocked out then. You, uh, yes, I was. The, um, the two metal bits of the wing luckily passed either side of my head, but I split the leading edge, the wooden leading edge. I did crack in half. Now, they're talking about uh, naming this airfield. They're going to put 12, 1,200 uh, further homes on the site. They're talking about street names for it. So uh, I thought about Wyatt's Way. Richard's close. Well, I was, I was going to say Starfighter <laughs> Avenue after the plane, because I'm trying to be modest. Once upon a time, I did a series called Wyatt's Walk, so I think Wyatt's Way would be quite nice. Brilliant. Let's pitch for that. OK, Richard, thanks very much for coming in. <laughs> nice to meet you, Kylie. It's sport time now, and it's a big night of football for those of our clubs still left in the Capital One Cup. Yeovil, Swindon and Cheltenham all play in the second round, and Bristol City...